Um, so, you know, just like Michael Costello, you are a fashion designer. You know what it, it's like to be a well-known designer, work with a lot of different people. And yeah. so um, tell us your account, because I do have some follow-up questions for you um, in, in everything that's going on right now. But tell us, what, what, was your, what happened? What was that experience for you? Um, for Michael Costello, um, we had an encounter about seven you know, seven years ago. So literally the situation that he's been talking about on the internet, you know, as far as trying to call Chrissy out on um, her bullying him, that was the exact incident that him and I had gotten into. And she actually was like defending me when she did say those words to Michael Costello. Now I could be completely honest with you. Like I'm not the biggest fan on like wishing death on people, even my worst enemy, right? I wouldn't use those words. But I do know that her anger steered from the racism that he showed me, you know, uh, seven years ago. And I mean, I did things out of character too when he first called me the N word. I mean, we got in a whole fist fight in a fabric store. So, I mean, with me knowing that I have so much to lose and I still like reacted that way. And, and obviously if I had more control over my emotions back then, I probably would have thought it out, you know, like I have a whole lot to lose. I can't be like in jail, like fighting people, but yeah. I did react emotionally because I just never experienced racism before. So I mean, I like read about it. I would like see it and I would be heartbroken, but like it never happened to me like directly before. So like my reaction was just like, oh, I should just fight. I don't know what else to do. So okay. that we just ended up like, it was, it was really, really bad but it, it veered from him saying it to me online now i he for sure said it online it was not a photoshop that is his pr team spinning it around because uh, he is like a celebrity designer and at the time i was like just starting i wasn't in business no more than six months when um he did what he did to me as far as like he purchased a dress on my website he then uh, posted the dress the very next day in his showroom with his logo on the background and just like resold it. My, my dress was $200 on my website, like $1,000 is how much he was selling it for. And I was just so devastated because I was like just starting, only been in the business for like six years. And I emailed him no answer. I DM'd him no answer. So I'm like, my little platform, no one's going to believe me. You know, like I'm new, but I'm like, let me just posted to my little following at the time I had like 5,000 followers and I'm like let me just post it to my following and just at least let my friends and my supporters know that like I didn't steal this from him so I posted his receipt of him purchasing the dress for me I posted the picture um, of him reposting the dress on his uh, Instagram and I just put my phone down and left once to go cry I feel bad for myself and I just started hearing my phone like dinging out of control and I'm like what's happening I go to my phone and that like that whole little pick collage thing went like viral. So um, he was reacting emotionally as well. And he was going off on people in the comments of the pick collage that I posted. And that is when he like, oh, you're defending that black, you know, blah, blah, blah. So that's where it started from, right? So um, that went viral. And then a year later, like, and I let it go. Like, I ended up deleting it. Like, I didn't want to even, I mean, there was so much drama that came from it. And then I was starting to hear that, like, he had, like, kids and they were getting bullied. And I just didn't want to be the cause of that, you know, because they're, like, children. So I'm like, All right, let me delete this. Like, you know, they shouldn't have to deal with, like, what his, what they're, what his, I didn't even know he had kids. But that's what yeah. I ended up finding out about. So, like, a year later, I go to a fabric store. And I see him. I instantly notice him, but he did not notice me at first. Like, he looked at me, we looked at each other, and then that was it. I went to go sit down, and the fabric store owner uh, came up to me and was like, oh, Maxie, you know, it's going to be another 30 minutes until your rolls of fabric are ready. So I think once he heard my name is when it registered, like, oh, that's her. So he comes up to me. I'm, like, sitting down. And he comes up to me. He's like, oh, I remember you. You're that black nigger bitch that, like, try to sabotage my business. I'm like, sabotage your business? Like, you stole my dress. And I'm like, wait, what did you just say? Like, what did you just say? And he takes my phone out of my hand and throws it, and it shatters. Oh, I lose my mind. When I say I lose my mind, I lost it, as if I didn't have, like, way too much to lose, you know? And so it's like, I'm not really, like, the proudest on how I reacted, but I also don't take it back. Okay. So I'm like, you know, I went ahead and reacted. We fought literally, like, like physically, back in the physical, day, like I was in high school. Yeah, wow. like it was the whole okay. thing. The police came. 
Um, and since I had witnesses, the owner of the store um, gave his his statement. He's like, yeah, he definitely abused her first, like verbally. He broke her phone. He definitely called her the N word. And like, I got all that on video. And then uh, so the so police was like, well, since you have like a witness, you know, it's up to you if he, he wants to go to jail, if you want him to go to jail or not. But he can request for you also to go to jail since you reacted physically. So I'm like, no, I can't go to jail. I have like a fashion show in two days. So I'm like, no, it's fine. I, I leave. Um, the next morning I wake up and it's like a pit collage of him with like bruises and blood. And I was like, back then I was like 120 pounds. I'm like, I mean, I knew I fought you, but it wasn't no blood and all of that. I'm like, where did that come from? Then, um, that picture goes viral, right? And he hashtags he, my, uh, brand name under all of them, all his fans and everyone's reposting. Oh, she's a monster. Don't support her. I'm like bawling, crying, I'm furious. And then someone DMs me like, from his team like oh uh first of all the you know the pictures at the bottom are like from a bar fight from like a year ago and if you pay attention like his haircuts are different in the photos so she's like please don't expose me like don't say my name is like i still work for him I'm looking for another job and so, so i did not expose her i still never say her name to this day and i'm not going to um but i reposted that and you know pointed out those pointers so once that got exposed and the video, I posted the video also of the store owner contesting to uh, witnessing that. Next thing I know, all those pictures that had to have my, my brand hashtag under it, they were gone. You know, back in 2014, hashtags was like the thing, like, you know, more yes. than tagging. You know what I mean? So yeah. my whole brand was filled with these, like, atrocious photos with, like, blood and bruises. Like, I just really beat this whole full grown mm -hmm. man up. And I'm like, 125. Now, I did fight now i'm not gonna lie yeah. but it wasn't no yeah. blood or the police would have for sure like took me to jail so once those photos and all that that video went viral all of a sudden those pictures were deleted also and i had a fashion show on two days so i didn't want to entertain the drama anyway so as soon as yeah. i saw that he was done picking on me i deleted it off of my instagram too i deleted everything like i didn't even want to be in this but i'm like I had to defend myself and like I was new to the industry. Now people thinking I'm a crazy like lunatic and I'm just beating up folks. Like it's not yeah. how it went. Like I'd never been like in a racist situation before. So that was just the way that I reacted, you know. Um, yeah. So that's kind of a sum up like our history. So now, yesterday, I'm like, people are tagging me under the photos of him like in this whole sob story of how he's just been so depressed over the years. And, and granted, I'm really praying that he's just being dramatic like he always is. I don't wish death on anyone. I do take it very serious when people go through a depression like that. Stuff is serious. But at the same time, it feels very ironic that all of a sudden, seven years later, because I've never mentioned it again. Like, I've never okay. said it again. I never posted it, anything. I just felt that it was ironic, like, seven years later, while she's being bashed and kicked for you know, her uh, past mistakes and she's owning up to them and she's trying to do better. Here you come with your side story and you're playing victim. It's like, you are the bully of them all, sir. Did you forget? <laughs> like, let me remind everyone here, like, you definitely, call, you definitely call me out of my name and you have all kinds of black people in your designs that's helping you with sales and promotion and everything else. But like, you're disrespecting our culture behind closed doors. So I just had to like <laughs> remind everyone like, yeah, hello. I was seeing people in the comments like that were black that were like defending him. And I'm just like, uh, you don't like us, y'all. Let me remind y'all. <laughs> you do not <laughs> like us. <laughs> like, so that is what happens. So I didn't know it was going to turn into all of this either. You know, I'm not really into like the drama, you know, um, I just have, I'm way too busy to be like entertaining that drama, but I definitely did not want people to be defending him for bullying or or being bullied i'm sorry when he's the biggest bully of them all so okay. that's